Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. Our guest today in the studio is Craig Knutson from Yamaha. Nice to Great see you to again, see Mitch. You. Absolutely. Thanks for coming in. We're always a, always a pleasure to have you here at Sweetwater. Great to be back in your new studio. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, we're having some fun. We're checking out the uh, Clavinovas here. We've got five of them surrounding us. Pretty yep. amazing array of keyboards. It's an exciting time at this point. Absolutely. So the Clavinova is a very interesting keyboard, and of course it dates back 30-some years now, right? The first Clavinova came out? Yamaha invented the very first digital piano. Clav mm -hmm. means keyboard, Nova means new. Mm -hmm. And the original inception for the Clavinova, in the late 70s, the president of Yamaha asked the engineers to create a piano that didn't need to be tuned. Mm -hmm. And it's come to mean so much more since then. Right, right. Now it's really applicable for professionals, for studio use, for people working at home, for students. There's a broad range of applications for a Clavinova. Yeah, it's pretty amazing in the sense that, you know, you can make it appeal to uh, someone learning to play piano. And yet, like you said, in the studio, it really focuses on the piano, the piano sound, the piano touch in a way that really no other instrument does. Right, and really no other company could have done that because of Yamaha's history with acoustic piano. How long have they been making acoustic pianos? <laughs> Early 1900s, a lot of people don't know this, but yeah. their very first musical instrument was 1887. It was a reed pipe organ. And then uh, um, they've gone through a tremendous amount of vertical integration. You've probably heard that Yamaha, of course, makes motorcycles. Sure. Uh, but that was actually based upon their experience of creating the incredible uh, harp of a piano. They were so good at the V-Pro process and created that, uh, that harp so well that then they went into uh, engine blocks. Uh, hmm. But all the things they do always go back to music. I call it musical inspiration based upon this uh, vertical integration. Right, right. One of the things to note is that Really, the Clavinova has been recognized as a real game changer. You've gotten some design awards and lots of interesting things going on there. Absolutely. It's won the uh, Red Dot uh, Award for design, this specific model in 2015. But the one that, that I'm most intrigued with is uh, just this year, Time Magazine recognized the Yamaha Clavinova as one of the top 50 most influential gadgets of all time. Wow. That's a pretty heavy-duty uh, heavy duty one. Yeah. And, uh, uh, the, I think the one reason why they said they recognized it was Yamaha, through the Clavinova, has changed the way in which people make music in the home. Notice I didn't say play music. We're not playing a CD or we're not uh, playing an MP3 player. It's how they make music in the home. And mm -hmm. there's a big difference between passive, uh, passive music listening and active music making. And the Clavinova has changed the way in which people make music in the home, and that's why they recognize the Clavinova for that, I believe. All right, it's an important distinction. Pretty impressive too. I love uh, walking into our uh, dealer stores and actually seeing that Time Magazine. PLP. Right, right. That's awesome. Yeah. And what we're really looking at here is an instrument that can deliver an incredible piano sound, an incredible piano touch, mm. as well as a lot of other features as well. And right. that's where it starts to kind of cross over into some of those pro areas and some of the learning areas and things. There's no doubt about that. In fact, there are some things that we do on the Clavinova that we don't even do in our pro division. For example, there's a thing called string resonance, mm -hmm. and I can possibly show that to you later, but that's one of the very distinguishing features of a Clavinova. Right, right. Some of the other interesting things here are that the Clavinovas are actually have features that are really close to what's happening with an acoustic piano. So as, in a, as an acoustic piano player, mm -hmm. you're going to sit down and feel very comfortable right away. Well, you're talking about touch right mm -hmm. there, absolutely. And uh, uh, so the touch, one of the things that we focus on is uh, we have what we call on all Clavinovas synthetic ivory key tops. This absorbs moisture. So if I'm even um, sweating or perspiring even a little bit. It helps absorb that moisture so it feels more natural. Mm -hmm. We put real wood on certain Clavinovas, CLP 545 and higher, inside the key. Not because you feel the wood as you're playing the key, but uh, if the key was hollow, uh, then you wouldn't get the vibrations of the instrument through your fingers. And let's face it, an acoustic piano, those strings are vibrating, you want to feel things moving, right. and having that wood inside a key makes a big difference. Right, right. And we were talking about the amount of detail that went into devising and making the actual piano action that's in these instruments. <laughs> Most recently we added a thing called escapement. Mm -hmm. um, on an acoustic piano when you hit a key, all right, of course the hammer hits the string. Well when you hit that key there's a thing called the jack that slips off the knuckle and it has to slip off the knuckle so that that hammer can strike that string and let it vibrate. Well we actually incorporated escapement in here. I can feel a simulation of that jack 
slipping off the knuckle, which an acoustic piano player, especially at low and soft volumes, expects to feel that. And if it's not there, then it feels funny. Right, right. So yeah. very, very authentic. Oh, and no just the way that the uh, the keys are put together with the different weightings and the way that's all been uh, been. Uh, uh, put together, I guess you'd say, is really, really pretty amazing. Yeah, and the higher end models have a different hammer size all the way from the top key all the way down to the bottom. And this CLP 585 even has counterweights on the inside hmm. that make it easier to push the key down so that when you're playing at soft volumes, you have more control. Right, right. Yeah. Stuff you just don't even think about when you're thinking about a, a keyboard. Well, yeah. absolutely. And these are things that keyboards um, don't do. You know, digital. Uh, slab, we call them slab pianos in our industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone else makes digital pianos. Only Yamaha makes Clavinova. And good analogy is everyone else makes facial tissues, but only one company makes Kleenex. Right. So we're sort of the Kleenex of the digital piano industry with Clavinova. Right. right. Such attention to detail. You mentioned the string resonance. Mm. Show us how that works and how that relates to an acoustic piano. Well, one of the things that makes a piano sound so rich when you're playing it is not only are the strings and the keys that you're playing ringing in the piano, when, especially when you hold down the damper pedal, other strings are ringing in harmonic resonance. And I can actually show that. If I actually uh, uh, play a C chord, and my thumb is on middle C here, you notice that I didn't make the hammers hit the simulated strings here, but I can set these strings into motion by hitting notes that are part of the harmonic series. Watch this. You can hear that C chord come to life. If I play a D flat, doesn't do it. Right. B doesn't do it. But the C, which is part of the harmonic series, sets it into life. And a piano technician showed me that the clavinova is so authentic that it even goes the other way. If I play this chord while holding those notes down, exactly reversed, that chord comes to life in those strings that aren't even tuned to that pitch. So incredibly authentic. Yeah. I was just so impressed. Really, really yeah. amazing. And like you say, very impressive. Yeah. So it's interesting that there's kind of two aspects to this. There's that recreating the authenticity of an acoustic piano. But then there's some ways where this actually goes beyond what an acoustic piano can do. Very well said, Mitch. You know, in fact, when I do piano teacher seminars and things like that, I spend a lot of time how it is like an acoustic piano. I once had a piano teacher raise her hand and she said, why do you go all that effort? Why not just go out and buy an acoustic piano? Mm -hmm. And she makes a very valid point. Uh, however, there are things that this does do better than an acoustic piano in the sense that it never needs to be tuned. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it costs to tune uh, a piano in various cities in the United States, at least $100. You're supposed to uh, 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 tune a piano at least twice a year, that's $200. Over a five-year period, that's $1,000 you sure. can take off the price of this instrument because it's maintenance-free, doesn't need to be tuned. Um, you don't even need to regulate this piano, you know, because the regulation stays consistent. So that's one of the things, no tuning. Mm -hmm. You can play this with headphones. Boy, that's really appealing, especially nowadays when uh, my nephew's playing video games in the other room and my niece wants to practice the piano. Right. Well, she puts on the headphones not because she doesn't want to bother him. She's putting on the headphones so that he doesn't bother her <laughs> right. while she's practicing. <laughs> right. um, another benefit is it's certainly more portable mm -hmm. than a piano would be. I mean, it's still not as portable as a, as a slab digital piano. Um, you know, so portability is important. And then there's a... The versatility, all of the other sounds that we can add besides the piano sound. In fact, this clavinova, in fact, all the clavinovas that we have, with the exception of the entry level, have two world-class pianos built into them. A high-resolution, high-definition recording of a CFX 9-foot concert grand and a Bosendorfer. Nice. Amazing. Nice. So let's assume I have a studio, which I do. <laughs> and uh, and uh, you want to have a keyboard that's going to integrate well with that and give you a lot of capabilities. How does a clavinova fit into that scenario? Well, first of all, you don't need to mic the piano. Mm -hmm. You know, it is uh, an acoustic piano. There's an art form, of course, to miking an acoustic piano. Well, here you're basically going to take the stereo audio outputs and go right into your board. Right. Uh, this is one reason why churches absolutely love clavinovas because they don't need to mic it. It goes right into the sound system like everything else. Mm -hmm. So that's one nice. Uh, uh, thing that you can do. And then also we've got a variety of different pianos. We've got bright piano sounds uh, to cut through the mix in a studio for certain songs, but then we've also got some beautiful mellow sounds, and of course with the Bosendorfer with that uh, incredible sound. Um, you can also do some multi-track recording internally into the unit. Great right. for a musician who wants to do a quick scratch pad of something, you know, and it is uh, possible to record two completely different ways. Yamaha Clavinovas record uh, CLP 535 and higher. 
uh, record and playback, both in MIDI, which is a recording of the performance that mm -hmm. we're used to seeing, but also records in audio. And right. uh, it's just amazing to think that this can record both ways, which makes it very useful for uh, both professional musicians and hobbyists. Right, right. And I see it as a, as a studio guy. When you have a skilled piano player come into your studio, yeah. they want to play something that feels and sounds like a, a real piano, <laughs> an, an acoustic piano, let's put it yes. that way, uh, yeah. because this is a real piano, but uh, an acoustic piano. And so having the option of, of that keypad and the, uh, the action that you have, is, I think, is really an awesome thing. Well, and you're absolutely right, and you bring up a really good point. Sometimes as I travel the United States and people ask about a clavinova, they say, does it feel like a real piano? I said, well, it is a real piano. There's a variety of different piano technologies that have occurred over the years. You know, 300 mm -hmm. years ago, Cristofori helped to create the action of an acoustic piano, but 100 years ago, we had player pianos. 60 years ago, we had electric pianos, right? And then about 30 years, we've had digital pianos. But the right. big improvement from an electric piano to a digital is electric pianos didn't have the touch of an acoustic piano. They didn't normally sound like an acoustic piano. In fact, that's what they were selling, was a unique sound, you know? And then they didn't even look like acoustic pianos. You were lucky to get all 88 keys and three pedals like a clavinova has. So that's right. how a digital piano and a clavinova is different. It sounds like a piano, it looks like a piano, and it feels like a piano, an acoustic piano. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so let's go the other direction. Okay. If you want to have a great piano for your home, Right. Why does the uh, clavinova fit into that scenario well? Well, first of all, it is a beautiful piece of furniture. As opposed to a slab keyboard, you are buying a piece of furniture. We did a study uh, years ago uh, with Moritz that uh, when clavinovas ended up in the home, 67% of the clavinovas ended up in the living room. Hmm. All right. So this particular model is a polished ebony, but in the CLP series, we offer a rosewood, we offer a mahogany and even a black walnut. So it's a beautiful piece of furniture. Uh, even the fall board, like our uh, CFX, does the slow close just like our fine grands. You know? nice. So uh, all of this attention to detail is really what makes a Clavinova look good in the home. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's other features in here. There's a, uh, a feature in here that um, as you decrease the volume of a Clavinova, after all, it's electronic, it's going through speakers, uh, in general, what happens is you tend to lose bass. Well, no one wants to play a clavinova at full volume in the home. Well, we've got a special feature in here, uh, uh, IAC, that allows you to reduce the volume, but then it commensurately makes sure you don't lose that bass at lower volume. So again, attention to detail, because uh, the engineers know that this is going to be used in the home. Right. And is this going to be a good keyboard for a student? Oh, absolutely. It's mm -hmm. got about 303 built-in lesson songs. You got your, uh, your uh, Cherney, Bayer, Bergmuller, even Hannon Exercises. And what I like about it, Mitch, is uh, these performances are built right into the instrument. And uh, if you get the music to it, a standard you know, music book that you might get from a teacher. Right. We even have an app, though, NoteStar, where you get those uh, for free if you buy a CLP 500. Uh, but that's another story. Uh, but what's fun about it is you can shut off the right hand, and while you're learning the right hand, why not let the clavinova play the left hand? Mm, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just a wonderful interactive tool to make learning, you know, more fun too, which right. is important. Right. And once again, you're practicing with a real piano that feels and sounds like an acoustic piano, which is, as a student, important. Very critical, because what happens a lot of times is. Uh, uh, parents, when their their children, for example, in the home are learning to play the piano, they often turn to the piano teacher for advice. And uh, I remember, uh, gosh, 20 years ago doing piano teacher seminars, and the seminar started like this with the traditional piano teacher. Well, now the seminars with piano teachers are more like this because they are much more uh, happy with the sound of the piano, the touch of the piano. When we start adding things like string resonance and damper resonance and all these subtle details. Um, an analogy that I like um, is if you play a, a digital piano without these string resonance samples, as an example, mm -hmm. right, that's like eating food without aromas. Okay, now we've all had a cold and uh, our nose is stuff, and then you eat that food and it just doesn't quite taste right. Well, people right. used to say that about digital pianos. It's a high resolution, high definition of a piano, but they say it still doesn't quite sound right. Well, one reason for that is because they were missing those string resonance samples and those subtleties. So now you get those aromas that you right. expect to hear 
on a digital piano coming out of a clavinova. Right, right. Yeah. And we've been focusing uh, primarily on the piano aspect of this, yes. but it does a lot of other things too. Oh yeah, that's where the versatility comes in. Of course, we've got a variety of different piano sounds. We've got some wonderful electric pianos. That's, that's the iconic DX7. We've got other electric pianos, a little vintage EP. Pipe organ sounds. These are samples of actual instruments, and then a lot of other voices, including, uh, for example, harpsichord. Authentic is important. On a harpsichord, when you release, the plectrum then goes back against the string, and you hear that release sound. Watch this. Mm -hmm. You hear that release on that, and another thing a clavinova does, attention to detail, at this point, a harpsichord is not touch sensitive, all right? A piano, of course, is. If I go to the piano sound, if I play softly, if I play loud, well, a harpsichord did not play with expression, right. all right? And so if I played very softly, and I play very hard now, you know, it sounds the same. Exact so, same, sure. wonderful sounds, uh, harpsichords, we got harp. Again, a recording of an actual harp sound, vibes. And again, attention to detail, that left pedal will stop the rotors in the vibraphone from, uh, for the tremolo. Mm -hmm. We could do an hour and a half video on all of the different features and functions. Right, right. <laughs> and then you have onboard uh, songs and rhythms and things as well? Yeah. That little theme about making it more fun to learn, too. Of course, one of the reasons why people, uh, when they learn to play the piano, they play along with a metronome, okay, mm -hmm. is because learning to play the piano is a solitary experience, as opposed to band. I've got a good friend who used to say, why do kids learn how to count better in band and orchestra? And uh, he used to say, it's because no one wants to play during the rests. You know, it's right. absolutely true. But a, a piano, it's too easy to do your own tempos. So that's why piano teachers traditionally turn on metronomes, and we've got a built-in metronome over here. But uh, ask kids if they want to play along with a metronome, and most say, oh, it doesn't sound too exciting. Mm -hmm. But ask them if they want to play along with a drummer. Suddenly they light up. Well, basically a drum sound in here, an automatic rhythm sound, is like a cool metronome. And so all I need to do is go to the metronome here, use the screen up here, that, uh, and I can actually see different rhythms. And of course, a kid's going to find that more interesting. Don't kid yourself, it's still a metronome. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> Even has a nice little ending on it when you try to stop it. So, nice, so, nice, yeah. nice. Well, we've barely scratched the surface. Certainly uh, what true. the uh, the Clavinova family can uh, can deliver as far as the acoustic piano, as far as the other instruments and those extended features and things, so much great stuff that's uh, that's possible here. Whether you're a pro, or whether you're using this in a home situation or with students, it really is an ideal instrument. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do with it is to connect an iPhone or an iPad to it. If you or even a Droid, if you have. Uh, your MP3s, for example, on your smartphone, mm -hmm. simply take the uh, audio out and go into the incredible speakers of this. This is a three-way speaker system with a tremendous amount of power. Right. You can also do things wirelessly. We have wireless MIDI is made possible with a little thing called a UDWL01. I can actually play the keys from my iPad on this piano wirelessly. That's and crazy. There are hundreds of apps. Uh, and Yamaha makes many apps uh, that uh, also work well with Clavinovas. Right. Note Star, Chord Tracker, these are things that uh, you've covered, for example, in your wonderful iOS Minute. Sure, sure. Tons of great stuff that's, uh, that's possible with a Clavinova. Thanks so much for coming in and giving us oh, a, a brief tour. Certainly there's a lot more to cover here, so we're going to want you to contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or uh, visit Sweetwater.com and check these out. But we appreciate the, uh, the overview, Craig. Have Always a, a pleasure to see you. Sincerely appreciate it. All right, come back soon. Thanks. And thank you for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. I'm Mitch Gallagher.